Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's day 231 and we are in Numbers chapter 31. Going back to this wonderful book that's taught us so much about what it means to follow the Lord faithfully and and really to overcome doubt and struggle and uh, the tendency to complain as well as to faithfully obey his his leading and we've seen much of Christ in this book and uh, we're drawing close to the end of this one but here's numbers chapter 31 the lord spoke to moses saying let's pray first sorry forgot to pray how can i do that let's pray father in heaven thank you for your word please write it on our hearts please teach us and please grow us for the sake of your glory we pray in jesus name amen Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Avenge the people of Israel on the Midianites. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm men from among you for the war, that they may go out against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. You shall send a thousand from each of the tribes of Israel to the war. So there were provided out of the thousands of Israel a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand from each tribe, together with Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, with the vessels of the sanctuary and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. They warred against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every male. They killed the five kings of Midian with the rest of their slain, Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. And they also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword. And the people of Israel took captive the women of Midian and their little ones, and they took as plunder all their cattle, their flocks, and all their goods. All their cities and the places where they lived and all their encampments they burned with fire, and they took all the spoil and all the plunder, both of man and of beast. Then they brought the captives and the plunder and the spoil to Moses and to Eleazar the priest and to the congregation of the people of Israel at the camp on the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the chiefs of the congregation went to meet with them outside the camp. And Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds who had come from service in the war. Moses said to them, Have you let all the women live? Behold, these, on Balaam's advice, caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in the incident at Peor. And so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves. Encamp outside the camp seven days. Whoever of you has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. You shall purify every garment, every article of skin, all work of goat's hair, and every article of wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men in the army who have gone to battle, This is the statute of the law that the Lord has commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that can stand the fire, you shall pass through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall also be purified with the water for impurity. And whatever cannot stand the fire, you shall pass through the water. You must wash your clothes, on the seventh day, and you shall be clean, and afterward you may come into the camp. The Lord said to Moses, Take the count of the plunder that was taken, both of man and of beast, you and Eleazar the priest, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the congregation, and divide the plunder into two parts between the warriors who went out to battle and all the congregation, and levy for the Lord a tribute from the men of war who went out to battle, one out of five hundred of the people and of the oxen and of the donkeys and of the flocks. Take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as a contribution to the Lord. 
and from the people of Israel's half, you shall take one drawn out of every fifty, of the people, of the oxen, of the donkeys, of the flock, and all the cattle, and give them to the Levites who keep guard over the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now the plunder remaining of the spoil that the army took was 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all, women who had not known man by lying with him. And the half, the portion of those who had gone out in the army, numbered 337,500 sheep, and the Lord's tribute of sheep was 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was 61. The persons were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was 32 persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the contribution for the Lord, to Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. From the people of Israel's half, which Moses separated from that of the men who had served in the army. Now the congregation's half was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, and 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 persons. From the people of Israel's half, Moses took one of every 50, both of person and of beasts, and gave them to the Levites, who kept guard over the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses." Then the officers who were over the thousands of the army, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, came near to Moses and said to Moses, Your servants have counted the men of war who are under our command, and there is not a man missing from us. And we have brought the Lord's offering what each man found, articles of gold, armlets and bracelets, signet rings, earrings and beads, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest received from them the gold, all crafted articles, and all the gold of the contribution that they presented to the Lord from the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds was 16,750 shekels. The men in the army had each taken plunder for himself, and Moses and Eleazar received the gold from the commanders of the thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the people of Israel before the Lord. Well, we have here uh, an accounting of holy war. And this is always a sobering thing for us to consider when we are in the Old Testament. And it's a good reminder for us to remember that the ways of God in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant with the nation of Israel, are different from the ways of God in in the New Testament, the New Covenant with the church. Although it's the same God, same covenant of grace, same way of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, and the promises of God that would ultimately be fulfilled in Christ, the ways which God calls his people to war in the world and the nature of the kingdom among the nations of the earth are are different. That's what I mean by the ways of the Lord being different. I'm not saying that God has changed because he hasn't changed. But like yesterday, we were in Philippians chapter 1, and we saw what spiritual warfare looks like in the New Testament age. It looks like being willing to suffer and maintaining your faithful testimony and being humble and living for Christ and staying faithful even in the face of persecution. But here, this is not... The call here is to vanquish enemies and to, uh, in some cases, extinguish peoples. Now, a lot of people who are critics of the Bible have said, well, God calls for genocide and that's just not right. These are blatantly immoral idolaters who know the truth, who've been told the truth, and who deliberately reject the truth and who attack God's people. And so this, the, the Midianites here had, had been engaged with Balak and Balaam in trying to lure Israel away from the faithfulness to the Lord and into idolatry and unbelief. 
And that's why Moses was so upset that they tried to take captive the women of Midian and their little ones. Because the women were the ones who had actually been sent out on the advice of Balak to seduce the men into idolatry and immorality. <clears throat> so these very same women were the ones who seduced the men and got them to participate in pagan idolatry and then in sexual immorality. And so if they're brought into the camp, if they're brought into the people of God, they're going to continue that practice. And that would have been spiritually disastrous for the people of God. But we need to realize that in the New Testament age, we are not called to earthly combat and to holy war of this kind. Like the crusades that took place in the Middle Ages when the Pope called for uh, Christians to take up arms and go and fight against Muslims to secure the Holy Lands. That was wrong. That was inappropriate. That was unbiblical. And in, in, the, in those times, the Pope followed the example of these holy war passages from the Old Testament. And there are some people in the church today who would say, well, we need to just fight for our rights as Christians, and we need to fight for the cause of the gospel. We need to be willing to get out there and defend our homes and our liberty and blah, blah, blah. And they do so in a way that is not honoring to Christ. Because Christ submitted himself to his Father's will and was faithful unto death. And Christ says to us, take up your cross and follow me. Do not return evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be Pray for those who persecute you. Be kind to those who are cruel to you, is what Jesus tells us to do. Turn the other cheek and go the extra mile and all those kinds of things. So the call of God's people in the New Testament age, it is still spiritual warfare. It is still trying to push back the darkness, but we do so by love. We do so by love and by proclamation. The sword we wield is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. The, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds and destroying every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So we preach, we proclaim, we reason from the scriptures, and we show by our lives the consistent testimony of those who've been transformed by the grace of God and who love. Now, nevertheless, we can learn some important principles here from these holy war passages, even though we need to be very, very clear that we are not called to holy war. What we can learn from these passages is that when God calls us to a work, we need to be very thorough and very zealous to do the work to the utmost, not leave it half done and half hearted. And we need to be wise in how we carry out the work of God. Also, we see the principle here that of what God blesses us with, we need to give, right, uh, the uh, of the abundance to the church and to the work of God. So this is these these are all in addition uh, to the tenth to the to the um, to the tithe. Okay, so in addition to the tenth, in addition to the tithe, there would go um, the the one fiftieth to the Levites and the one five hundredth to the priests personally, that would be theirs, their share of the spoil. The priests and the Levites don't go out to fight in the war, and they also don't have land like the rest of the tribes, and so they're given a portion. So God's people who serve in the ministry of the tabernacle, the church, the, the, the people who serve are, are provided for by the abundance of the people of God. So we see this wholehearted devotion to the work that God has called us to do, and then also of the abundance that God blesses us with. Not only should we be faithfully tithing, but when we're brought into a season of being given an abundance more than we need, we should be looking to bless God's people and bless God's church and bless the work of the church in that way. Let's pray. Father, thank you for calling us to be your own. Thank you for giving us good work to do in this world. We are engaged in holy war, but we don't do so with the weapons of this world. We do so with the sword of the spirit and with prayer and with our testimony. 
So, Father, help us to be eager to proclaim the gospel, to love our neighbors, and to push back the darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow we'll continue on into Numbers chapter 32. There's 36 chapters in Numbers, so we are coming close to the end. Hope you can be with us then. Have a blessed day in the Lord.